it's Jim. Today I'm going to do something a little different like than you might expect. And I'm actually going to show you how to take this Bafang BBS HD mid-drive kit off of this bike. And why might you do this? One, um, you might discover that the bike doesn't fit you as well as you think. Sometimes with the e-bike kit, you're going to ride further and faster and some of the fit issues can then be more magnified because longer rides, you might be a little more tired, you might develop some aches and pains you didn't even know you are going to have. On this particular, particular instance, I got this bike for a person um, and it didn't really fit them. And I didn't really know that because I just bought them thinking it probably would. Um, the other thing is there's a couple issues I'm going to show you that I didn't anticipate with this frame where the kit doesn't quite fit this bike that well. And the last thing, component wise, the rear wheel on this is a mess. <laughs> so when you have a lot of power pulling through a mid drive, you need to make sure your rear cassette axle is solid or, and this actually has a little bit of a, some of the interior bearings are, are toast in there. I'm going to see if I can repack them, see if it's actually salvageable. If not, I probably just have to get another rear wheel. This being a 26 inch rim, it's pretty easy to find a used nice rim to replace this if I need to. Fit issue number one. If you can see down there, the side of the mid drive motor is actually up against the chain stay. Um, I think I could shim it out and alleviate some of that. Um, but I think part of the problems I'm having is that that's up against there, and I didn't really realize it right away um, because it felt like it got up there flush. But the problem then is if I shim that out, you can see my chain line is going to be, it's going to push that out even further. So I'd only really have a decent chain line in the highest few gears. So I'm just going to scrap it on this bike and uh, try to find a better suited bike. I'll do another video on the install, um, but I think this could be helpful showing how they come off. Sometimes that actually can be really enlightening. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to at least unplug the battery. That way everything's, you're not going to be in danger of accidentally turning this on. But I'm actually going to pull off the battery as well. Uh, this triangle battery uh, this is the first time I really did it this way. It's not, it, it works good for weight distribution, but it doesn't look all that great. Uh, I just, you know, the Velcro straps all over the place just look a little tacky to me on a, especially not on a black frame. All right, battery off. Most of the tools to take off this mid drive are more or less the same as putting it on. Um, you'll need an assortment of Allen keys. You might need a 15 millimeter wrench for your pedals unless it's got an Allen on the back side. Uh, this wrench it's for the Bafang to take off the two kind of locking keys to it. And uh, also a pedal crank wrench uh, to take off the crank arms. Um, and, that, and that's really the gist of it. Um, I'm also going to have to pull off these slip-on grips. I, I usually like to use locking grips, but I had these grips. Um, so I'll use a little bike pump with an inflation needle to kind of blow these off. So I'm going to disconnect the speed sensor back here. The speed sensor maybe is the most uh, sensitive thing on this whole kit. Um, some of these frames depend on the shape of the chain stay. It can be a little problem problematic to get it to stay in place. And if you take the wheel off and on, uh, I've seen some people that really aren't necessarily bike savvy kind of bump that and end up kind of having to reorient and get the speed sensor into place. If the speed sensor is not active, if it's not sensing a speed, the, motor, the controller doesn't know it's moving. So it basically will time off and shut off the power on you. So a pair of dikes so you can control your cutting or key, as well as a place to put your spent zip ties. Next thing I'm gonna do is remove the crank arms. Well, actually I'm going to remove the pedals first. Which pedals are typically a 15 millimeter if they don't have an Allen on the back. Thing to remember with pedals is if they're on the right side, and hopefully somebody put them on property on the right side crank arm, proper side crank arm, they always 
tighten forward. That way when you're pedaling and it's spinning the pedal forward, it's tightening. It's kind of like the same theory as like some uh, single bolts on NASCAR or race car wheels, so it's always tightening. Next, you have to take off the crank arm bolt, crank bolt rather, and that is a eight millimeter bolt. Very standard, um, and these are normally threaded, so lefty loosey. And then you need to get uh, your pedal, not pedal wrench, crank arm wrench. And these work by the concept of you got two inner, two layers, one turns outside of the other and pushes the inner barrel, so you thread it on there normally, because it's, like I just said, these are usually threaded, normally threaded, and then you spin that until it makes contact. And these haven't been on there all that long, and they're not rusted into place or anything like that. And there you go. Crank arm. I a lot of times like to thread this crank bolt back in there just so I know where it is. Next thing now is to take off the Bafang retaining nuts. Uh, the outer one should be pretty, it's, you don't want to torque that down too much. It's really more of a visual uh, just to clean up the appearance here. Now this one could be a challenge. Uh, especially since I know I put this on here, so I know I really cranked it down. So it's probably going to take a bit of force to get it to move. Now, depending on how long you've had your mid-drive on, uh, just because the torque in the mid-drive moves a little bit and it tends to, it tends to want to loosen these. So a lot of times you'll find that this, over time, this will drop down and you have to re-tighten these things in here. So it could be a little looser when you get to this point. Not really a huge risk uh, for that, the little bit of movement. Um, but if you have the, you know, if you have the chance and you have the tool, when you notice that, just give it a little tighten up. Uh, the two bolts that go in this uh, locking flange into the motor are five millimeter bolts. Um, you might have spacers in here if you had to space it for your bottom bracket. This was a 68 millimeter bottom bracket, so it just snugged right up in there. And this will probably drop down once this comes loose. So there's that flange, and uh, when you put these on, the teeth part goes to the inside because that allows it to dig slightly into the frame. So I know I might be putting this on another bike pretty soon. I'm just gonna put some of these fasteners just kind of back in there loosely. Now I could, at this point, I could take this crank arm off and take these bolts off of the chain ring, but I don't really need to because it's just gonna slide out here. And you know, I know I'm gonna put on another bike, so I don't really need to do that. So I'm going to slide the chain off out of the weight. And this guy should just kind of come towards me. All right. So you can see here, that's where it was making contact with the frame. So now everything's off the back of the bike, center of the bike. All I really need to do is pull the display and uh, the throttle all up here. So that, that's only going to take me a minute. It's going to take me longer to take off the grips than it's going to do to take off those. These are uh, two and a half and three millimeters uh, in here. Of course, brakes are usually five millimeters. I did put the e-brake cutoff levers on this bike. So I'm going to put them on. I'll put the original uh, brake levers on here. So we're like 17 minutes into this video. Um, don't worry, you aren't having to have watched it this long. Um, I have this little, uh, you've seen these battery operated pumps. I'm gonna use this to take the grips off. Uh, what seems to work pretty well. 
is to put a ball inflation needle on it. I also have a golf tee that I'm gonna put in the opposite grip end. Pump goes in here, I can put pressure up against this. And what's usually helpful on that is to give it a little motion. Once it, you'll start to feel it basically expands the rubber and the grip a little bit and then it'll pop off. So on this side, I will plug this in with my finger. There you go. It's way easier than frying a screwdriver or something under there. I'm not gonna really show all the rest of this. All it is is unplugging it's not even unplugging it's just taking off the zip ties and sliding all this off of the handlebar it's all just allen bolts and usually these pry off uh, the throttle has a slide off and the brakes slide off but then the keypad and the display you can unbolt them and open them up and take them off all right so this is how you take a mid-drive off the bike so maybe you got a used bike that the bike doesn't quite fit you maybe you got a great deal and um, you know they're gonna just sell the bike for cheap and um, take the kit and put it on something else. So this maybe will help you out. And maybe it gives you an idea how they kind of go together. Sometimes taking them off or like disassembly can help you understand how things go back together pretty well. So I'll be doing a set of videos or maybe just one video with some stops in there on how you install, a, how I install a mid-drive kit. There's a lot of channels out there that's got some good information. I think Johnny Nerdout's channel has really got some good information on how he installs kits. Uh, I think we have a similar style of thinking. But got any questions, comments, throw them down below. Smash that like, subscribe button, all that. I don't like that word smash, but just do it anyway. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Catch the wave, feel.